Once you have WAMP server installed, launch the server by double-clicking on the WAMP icon. You'll see the WAMP icon appear in your system tray. The icon will transition from red to orange to green. If your icon stalls on orange, it means one of the services in WAMP server did not load properly. A common issue is if you have Skype running before attempting to launch WAMP server. Since some of the Skype services operate on the same port as WAMP server, port 80, there will be a conflict between the two applications. Turn Skype off and try to relaunch the server again. If the problem persists, you may need to consult a system administrator for further assistance. Once the icon turns green, click on it to bring up the WAMP menu. From the menu, we can do a number of things. First, we have the ability to restart, stop, or start all WAMP services. This includes Apache, MySQL, and PHP. It's normally a good idea to restart WAMP after you make changes to any of the configuration files. Next, you'll see a number of submenus and quick access files. The first is the MySQL menu. Here, you can get the MySQL version in the service subfolder, you can also stop, restart, or uninstall the MySQL service. We can see the version is 5.6.17. The MySQL console allows you to execute commands through a command console. Administering MySQL databases through command lines is fairly technical. For this reason, we'll be working with PHP MyAdmin later in this course. PHP MyAdmin allows for quick and easy database administration through a graphical user interface. However, we will gain some exposure to working with command lines when we configure our own live production server with a cloud hosting provider. The my.ini file is an important configuration file for the MySQL service. For now, you can leave the file with its default configurations. Similar to the MySQL menu, we also have a PHP menu. Here, we can check the PHP version, configure PHP settings, and enable or disable PHP extensions. Our version is 5.5.12. Take a moment to confirm that your default settings are the same as what we have here. We'll explore some of the relevant ones later in this course. The php.ini file contains important settings for your PHP configuration. Next, we have the Apache menu. In this menu, we can check the Apache version. We can stop, restart, or remove the service. You can also test port 80 to make sure it's used by Apache. To do so, just click on the test port 80 button. And you can see here that server Apache and PHP are using port 80. The httpd.con file contains important configuration settings for Apache server. And for now, we'll just be leaving the default configuration settings. The www directory is the web root folder. All your websites and website files should be stored in this folder. Using the web root folder for our web pages allows us to test dynamic scripts such as PHP files that interact with our MySQL databases. PHP files that are stored outside this directory will not function. In the next lesson, we'll test a few sample scripts to make sure that pages inside your root folder are working correctly. Next, we have a quick access link to PHP MyAdmin. PHP MyAdmin is a database administration tool that we'll be working extensively with later in this course. The My Projects folder contains a listing of all the website folders in your web root folder. The localhost quick access link will launch your web browser with the default WAM server page. We'll be exploring this page later on, but as a quick overview, it contains information about 
your Apache and PHP version. It also lists your loaded extensions and MySQL version. We can access certain tools like the PHP info file and PHP MyAdmin. We can also access our website folders under the Your Projects heading.